Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here. I apologize for not posting any videos over the last couple days, but I have had a bit of sickness going around again, and it's been uh, particularly bothering my throat again, as it always seems to. So it made it quite difficult to record videos for a little while, and I have just been sleeping a lot because I've been sick. But we're back again, and we're going to try and play some more here in FTL's Advanced Edition. So let's take a look at what ship we're going to be playing today and see what's up. Hop into the new game here. We are, of course, going to be playing with Type Cs, and today we're playing with the Tetragon. So this is the NG Cruiser. Type C. It's pretty interesting. It's got some cool features. We'll talk about them quickly and then we'll get going here. So this ship is, for one thing, pretty cool looking. It's a very smooth variation on the NG Cruiser theme. Doesn't have the same lines on it. It's just one smooth piece of metal. Very interesting looking. Goes well with the Lanius crew on board as well. So we have a Lanius and two NG to start ourselves off. We have ourselves a dual laser, a beam drone, which is a pretty interesting weapon combination to start off with. We also have a defense scrambler, which prevents enemy defense drones from targeting anything, which includes missiles, but also includes them attacking our drones or attacking our hacking modules, as this ship does also start with a hacking module, which is pretty interesting. Like all Type C's, it starts with a clone bay instead of a med bay. And it has a couple interesting other features, such as pretty good airlock coverage, as we have airlocks over here, here, and three up here. It also has some weird rooms. It's got six rooms in a row that are all one by twos, standing side by side, which is kind of strange. And overall, it's pretty solid. It's got a good collection of starting systems, such as it does have doors, radars, <laughs> doors, radar, rather. Piloting, all that kind of stuff. Oxygen, all those good things. Decent levels of shields and engines to get ourselves started with. And in general, I think it should work out okay. So we're going to start off, we'll rename this thing, and then we'll head into hard mode, of course, with Advanced Edition content enabled. We're going to rename this thing from the Tetragon, which is just a square, to the VSS Polygon. Here we go, regular polygons in this case. And we're going to rename our crew appropriately. You are now Decagon. You are going to be Hexagon. And you are going to be Octagon. Octagon. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, there we go. Decagon, Hexagon, and Octagon. Our crew is ready to go on board the VSS Polygon. And let's see if we can make anything happen with this thing. Honestly, though, I think this is probably one of the better Type-C ships in the game. It starts with some very good combos already set up, given that you have the Defense Scrambler hacking and drones and lasers already going on. That's some pretty powerful stuff. We'll see how it works out for us, though. Let's jump into this thing. Here we go. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We we'll need supplies for the journey, so we have to make sure we explore each sector before moving on to the next. And we have to get to the exit before the Rebels can catch us. Well, that sounds pretty standard. Let's send Hexagon over to shields, though, because I have a feeling that'll be better for us to actually train up our systems early on. It's easier to train engines later, harder to train shields later. So let's get a move on. We have a store right beside us. That's not going to help us. Let's go see what we can find. First jump, what do we have? Scans show remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. The ship hastily messages us, saying, Stay out of this or you'll be next. Concentrate fire on. Let's attack that pirate while they're not expecting it. You asked for it, they say, and pull away from the planet, moving in to engage. Heavy laser pike beam, I think the timing on that's pretty bad, but we'll have to see how it plays out. If at all possible, I'm just going to try and dual laser the weapons and make sure they can't actually get their combo off. These guys have no med base, so there's a good chance we can kill them without taking too much damage. There we go, now their combo is not possible since the weapon's broken. Pike Beam takes a long time to charge up anyway. We'll try and knock their shields out with the next dual laser shot to see if we can get in there a little bit easier next time. No, unfortunately they have some pretty tough shields. We'll take one more shot at the shields and see if we can maybe get in on weapons after that. They might have a good easy opportunity to get on our... Uh, defenseless ship though if we don't get through them right there which we did thankfully they're probably gonna fix the weapons right now which means we're gonna take another shot at them to make sure they do not there goes the shields back up again though which is bad news for us and the weapons are back down again which is fine go back for shields again but those are gonna be repaired there's probably an NG in there based on the rate at which they've been repairing let's fire the dual lasers and see if we can knock them down and now they're trying to run away which is bad news thankfully there's nobody on the helm which is gonna really make things difficult for them they're switching over the weapons. Are they taking fire damage in there or something? They must be, because otherwise they shouldn't have taken any damage there. Oh yeah, definitely on fire. Okay. That's good news for us. Pop the shields again. There's probably another crew in there somewhere. Apparently that last shot was not enough to kill them, unfortunately. He just bailed for the helm. But we're not going to let them get away. You are dead, sir. Nice try, Pirate Interceptor. Alright. We pick through the remains and contact the settlement after gathering two missiles, a drone part, and 15 scrap, and with the pirates gone, we signal the station. 
We appreciate what you've done, but there'll just be another ship looking to profit from our isolation soon enough. Sorry, we can't give you more. Giving us one fuel, two missiles, and nine scrap. All right, well, the missiles aren't great, but I'll accept everything else quite happily. Let's keep jumping and see what else we can find. We'll probably go one, two, then work our way through here a little bit and see what else we can find. Let's go take a look around, though, first. We stumble across a forward scout of the, Feder of the Rebel Fleet, rather not Federation, and they're powering up their FTL. If they go away, they'll no doubt warn the fleet of our position. Their weapons are not particularly... What? He's getting scrambled. That's what's going on. It's like, why is he spinning like a madman? It's because he is scrambled. So, we should probably hack their helm to prevent them from getting away. Then we should be able to do some damage with the dual lasers. Maybe hack the shields instead, or engines? I don't necessarily want to lock them in the helm, because I want when the beam drone starts doing damage, I want them to go to a different room. So if we hack the engines, that would probably be a better idea for us right now. This drone should not be able to target anything, so we should be able to get in there no problem. Fantastic. Once our dual lasers are ready to go, we're going to activate the hack. Here comes the dual laser shot into the helm. And now we activate the beam drone. Did not actually stop them, though. That's bad news. Okay, that could be really bad for us. Thankfully, we do have another hack coming in eventually. But we need to take those shields out immediately, otherwise they're going to get away. There we go. Do some damage there, drone. Distract them from that helm, otherwise they're going to get away on us. This shot's going into the helm again. Oh good, they've left. Going into shields then instead, so we can keep them locked down. There's nobody in the helm anymore, so it's safe to aim for other systems. We've only got two hull left, so this shot should kill them pretty quick. There we go. Rebel Rigger goes down. Nice try. Ship breaks apart and we're relieved to know we're still one step ahead of the fleet, getting two fuel, one drone part, and 17 scrap. So our drone paid for itself, which is great. Having 25 drone parts to start is really nice, but given that we have two systems that use them, both the hacking bay and the drone bay, I'm not surprised, because we're going to need them. Let's get over this way and see what else we can find in this place. We detect a rebel automated ship nearby. It doesn't engage and seems to be patrolling or in a long range sensor station. Obviously we attack the automated ship, especially since they have no shields, so our beam drone will demolish them here. We're going to get it in there, start doing damage already. It should only take two or three more shots to actually kill this thing, depending on where it actually aims. We already knocked out their ion weapon, so they're basically harmless now, and that is a dead auto-scout. Fantastic. Probably didn't need to rush like that, but I made sure we took no damage. We got eight scrap and some map data, which will be nice. That'll see if there's any ion storms in there. Of course, the first one's an ion storm. I don't really want to go into an ion storm. Let's go over here this way instead, then. Oh, and both of those are nasty, too. Asteroid field and a sun. Glad I didn't choose to go that way. All right. That's some valuable map data. Let's go to this distress beacon instead and see if we can find anything else worth having. Once we arrive at the location of the distress call, a civilian ship hails us. Thanks for responding to our beacon. Our FTL navigation has gone haywire, and we can't plot a course in the nearest depot to get it fixed. Could you lead us there? You're the same ship I just killed earlier, aren't you? Whatever. Let's leave them to the destination. They give us nine scrap and say, Take this bit of scrap as down payment. We'll use your jump signatures to follow you. You're really helping us out here. Well, no problem there, friend. Your quest beacon's really far away, but I guess we can probably go there and make it back? Eh, probably. Let's try it out and see if we can get there. And then move on. Hopefully they aren't just betraying us. We detect two ships, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuer is a pirate. Let's get in there and help that civilian. Here we go. Power weapons to engage the pirate ship. They have a flak weapon and an ion stunner. That's a pretty nasty combo. I think we're just going to knock out their weapons with a hacking drone just to make sure we're as safe as we can be. Dunk. There we go. And... Uh, hacking time is now. Dual laser go. Please knock out one of those weapons. Thank you. Ion stunner is not a great choice, but I'll take something over nothing. Now, we might be able to get another shot in here. No, they're definitely going to fire again before we can do anything else about it. Please don't hurt me too badly, Flag. And we set them on fire, which is great since they had nobody there. And we lost our shields, which is not great. And they have Rockman, which is also not great. But this is a step in the right direction, because those fires will take them extra time to put out, and the weapons are burned out already. Now we're going for the shields to prevent them from being able to defend themselves. There's two rocks on there. Wow. Well, conveniently, that fire is spreading pretty quickly, and that rock man is interested in getting to the shields rather than helping put out the fire, so they're dead now, I think. They can't run away, and there's basically nothing they can do about us. That fire was pretty lucky. Do a laser, and you are dead, Pirate Outrider. Nice try. Pirate ship breaks apart, giving us three fuel, two missiles, and twelve scrap, and we hasten to contact the civilians. When we do, they respond, saying, It's a good thing you came when you did. We'd be dead now otherwise. I'm a shipwright, and I'd like to help you like you helped me. Giving us eight scrap and a small bomb. I'll take it. Any items in the early game are awesome, especially on hard mode, because you really need to get all the money you can possibly get your grubby mitts on. Let's jump over this way, see if we can get to that quest beacon and make it back. 
We arrive at a populated sector where a merchant seems to be mass broadcasting a request for a mercenary ship to aid him. We respond, because although mercenaries are worse than rebels, we're also mercenaries. He says, Great! I was worried no one would respond. My usual carrier is days late. I need you to deliver this cargo of drone parts to a small station a few jumps from here. We can't afford to pay another carrier, but they'll surely tip you generously. Alright. He says, Great! I've uploaded their location to your star map. I'm running out of options, so I have no choice but to trust you'll do what you have agreed to do. Giving us five drone parts. Fantastic. Well, if we don't, if they don't want them, we'll keep them. Let's check out this quest beacon and see what else we can find over here. Can we get anything good from these guys? No. Oh. We arrive and the ship we were escorting jumps in behind us. Thanks for the help. We work at a nearby fusion power plant. We could try and improve your reactor's output as a form of compensation. Give us one reactor upgrade. That would be nice if it wasn't only worth 20 scrap, but I'll take it, I guess. So we have 78 scrap now, which is actually great, because we can use that to upgrade our shields to level 2. Done. And we're going to jump onwards. I guess that's actually a really convenient reactor upgrade, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to so easily afford that. We're probably going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 now. I don't know if we have quite that many jumps, but we might risk it anyway, just to get to that quest beacon and then back to the exit. What do we have over here? Herbal Space Station and Single Fighter is monitoring this beacon for Federation activity. A number of civilian ships are docked, awaiting inspection by the Rebels and possible detainment of their Federation loyalists. The Rebels haven't noticed us yet. Well, let's fend for ourselves, attack, and escape. Pew pew! They got a beam drone and a beam weapon, so they literally can't do a darn thing. Poor guys. Always sucks having that kind of thing going on. Let's do a laser them in the shields, make them more vulnerable. Of course we missed. This might be a slow start if we can't actually hit them. Let's see what happens. Let's go dual lasers, knock out those defenses. Well, this looks like it might be a very slow haul if that's all we're getting out of it. I could switch to small bomb. We use small bomb beam. We only have a couple missiles. I'm not sure if it's really worth wasting right now. There we go, now we got through. I can switch over to the beam drone if I need to, but I'm just going to blast them in the shields with the dual lasers for now. We should be able to get them down pretty reasonably. There we go, another shot in here. Should go in before they get the shields back up another bar. And if they do, then we are in good shape. Dual lasers go, perfect. There we go, now they got no shields at all. Next up we're going to knock out their helm so they can't dodge us if they manage it somehow. And then we'll be in pretty good shape for killing them, because we got no defenses and no evasion. Alright, they say they're, that we are considerably more well-armed than they would have thought, and they offer us three fuel, four missiles, and ten scrap. But I think we can probably get more scrap from them if we kill them. The missiles we don't really need, the fuel looks pretty nice, but hopefully we can still get a decent fuel offer from whatever else we get for killing them. As well as a bit more scrap metal. We'll see, though. The fuel is the thing that was really nice there, but we'll take what we can get from killing them. And we got three fuel still, and a drone part and 12 scrap. That's a much better offer all round. Ship explodes, giving us a nice selection of stuff. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's stick another power bar in there, because why not? Um, we could go to this distress beacon. We probably have enough time to do this. That'd be one, two, three. Might not have quite enough time to do it, but we'll do it anyway. Jump to the distress beacon and see what we find, and we'll head over to that quest beacon instead. We locate a nearby human mining colony where an unknown disease has spread virulently. They're setting up a quarantine to contain it, but a riot has broken out. Let's send our NG in to calm down the infected. With no fear of catching the disease, our NG crew member helps reassure and organize the infected humans. Come by its extensive knowledge of human physiology, the infected submit to the quarantine in the hopes that a cure can be found soon. The colony leaders offer a reward for helping to prevent an ugly incident, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and nine scrap. Well, drone parts are always valuable. Bringing us further from zero is always good up to 30 now, in fact, which is pretty crazy. And a ship refueling station can be found here. We will always purchase 6 fuel for 12 scrap, because 6 fuel for 12 scrap is a fantastic deal. Jump to the quest beacon, then back to the exit. We have plenty of time. We have a good amount of fuel, good amount of drone parts. Not a lot of scrap, but a pretty decent ship so far. We arrive at a location given to us by the merchant where we're supposed to deliver drone parts, and we find the distress a small research station and discover that it's putting out a distress signal. Strangely, there's no response to our hails. Well, we have a cloning base. So we might be okay to do this. Let's dock with the station and investigate. We dock with the station and see a frantic person banging on the airlock door. Once inside our ship, he drops to the floor, saying, My friends! They've gone insane! They're coming! We hand him a blaster and turn to see a number of people charging towards the ship. We have Maria on board. Welcome aboard. Prepare to fight! Alright, Maria. We have ourselves an extra crew. Let's go fight some boarders. Uh, how do we want to do this? Let's move our Lanius in there, and we'll send you two to go protect the radar. Once the oxygen drains out, those two should leave. And then we should be able to move Maria elsewhere. Actually, we shouldn't even need to do that. Once the air drains out, we can activate the airlocks. 
turn off the O2 briefly here. There we go. Move you out of the room. Move you out of the room. They should leave. Oh, they went to the helm. You jerks. All right, that's going to make things more difficult. Let's send some support. Nope, good, they've left. Perfect. All right, we turn the O2 back on. And we leave you. Nope, don't, don't leave that door open. Close that door. You need to go up here. You need to stop moving. Stay in there. Good. O2 is turned on. Now the doors are locked. Perfect. All right, now we need to go here and block the people in the engine's room. And we open these doors to start venting them out. Now, we might still be in trouble over here. I might need to send them some support soon. Very soon, in fact. Oh, they lost our radar now. All right, we need to get out of this room before people die for no reason. You can come up here. That's a one-person cloning bay. What do you know? Huh. Not that it matters how big it is, because you can only fit one person in anyway, but still. They're attacking our engines, though, which is not good news. And there's no air in here, so these guys will die if they try and cross that threshold. Alright, this could be bad. Let's turn off the O2 so they suffocate faster. I didn't even think about that earlier. Hmm. This could be a bad situation, especially if they destroy that clone bay. Then we might be dead. Hopefully that doesn't happen, though. Hopefully they suffocate before they do that. Well, they've broken our engines completely now. They're trying to get out of the clone bay, which is good, but unfortunately, we're really close to death here. Alright, you two need to leave. Get out of that room before you die, thank you. Alright, I'm gonna keep venting this ship. Oh, unfortunately, the O2 being off has come to be a problem for us. Octagon's going to die in a second. There's nothing I can do about it, I don't think, unless the air comes back in there really quickly. Nope, that's fine. They'll be back in the clone bay in a couple seconds, but unfortunately, that means they can move around freely throughout our ship, which is bad news. You need to get in there and get into those doors. They're trying to break our hacking system, so we're going to open these up, vent them out a bit quicker. Oh boy, this is a mess. Thankfully, they should get locked out of hacking soon enough. There we go. And I think they're all dead. Well... <laughs> That was a mess. Octagon died for our trouble, but at least we can turn the O2 back on, close all the doors, go do some repairs. We took a little bit of hull damage. Our crew is really weak, but we should be able to have them heal up after a little bit of time here. Let's open up our internal doors and see what we can do. Having three NG crew and one Lanius is not a great anti-boarding party. We'll have to deal with that later, I guess. For now, though, let's go get our crew to go fix some things. Got lots of things that need fixing, for sure. We have to rename Maria as well, so let's get in here and do this. You, Maria, are going to be renamed to uh, Pentagon. There we go. Oh, Pentagon doesn't fit, whereas Octagon, Hexagon, and Decagon all do. Huh. I guess that makes sense, because Pent has an extra letter in it. Yeah, there's no air in there. Alright, it's because the doors are open. Right, I forgot about that. Lanius drain oxygen out of your entire ship if you let them. So, we're not going to let that happen anymore. Let's send our crew back to their various stations. Hexagon, you're going back into shields. Octagon, you're going back into weapons. And Pentagon, you're going to stay in the engines. Fantastic. We have a whole bunch of... Gons. We have very little health, though, which is not cool. Let's jump onwards, get to that exit, and get out of here before anything else bad happens to us. We get nine health back each from that jump, which isn't great, but it'll do. We've arrived here at the Long Range Beacon, and we have to drive this charge. We can jump to the next sector, and we find, wow, a settlement still loyal to the Federation heals our ship. They have a weapon prepared to aid our escape from the Rebels, giving us seven scrap and an ion stunner. An ion stunner is a great weapon to combine with this beam drone. Probably even better than the dual lasers, because we can start immediately vaporizing people. So we might even swap this over right now. It really does reduce our ability to hit them reliably, though, so maybe not. Although, if we can upgrade our system to have an ion stunner and a dual laser, that'll be really strong. So that'll let us lock them down for the beam drone. Dual laser lets us do focus damage, and that'll be great. Either way, let's jump to the next sector now. You have two options here, rock controlled or NG controlled. We're definitely going to NG controlled. NG controlled sectors are great, and we have three NG on board, which makes it even better. And rock controlled sectors are more likely to have missiles, which is not something we want. So let's go to the NG controlled sector, and we'll see what we can do. We've arrived in NG space. The fall of the Federation has brought tough times to these robotic life forms, but they're usually willing to help. All right, I am uh, still a little bit sick, so I'm going through my water at a pretty crazy rate. I'm going to go refill that, and we'll be right back again to continue our adventure here in Sector 2. One second. All right, well, there we go. Got myself some water back again. Feeling a little bit better with the voice. Let's keep moving and see what else we can do here. So, we really want some power in here, otherwise we're kind of un undergunned at the moment. Let's check out these distress beacons, though, and see what we can get. Hopefully there'll be something good in these places. What is this all about? We follow the distress beacon to a tiny asteroid belt. We find a small ship struggling to maneuver through the field. Let's hail them and offer assistance. They respond saying their shields are down and they won't last long, so let's try and shield their ship with ours. Ooh, 
Despite our best efforts, the civilian ship breaks apart from the constant barrage. We're barely able to break out of the asteroid field ourselves. The ship sustained some damage in the process, but we do get 10 scrap as well as 4 damage to our hull. Thankfully, none of our systems were damaged. That's nice. That's not bad. Hopefully, this distress beacon will be less irritating. What's over here? A ship without life forms in the nearby dense asteroid field is giving off the distress call. Hmm, let's investigate. We might get some crystal crew out of this. Nope, we found a pirate ship, damaged and abandoned. We salvage what we can and move on, getting two missiles, a drone part, and 17 scrap. Okay, well, that's stuff at least. Probably gonna power up the weapons with that. Yeah, that seems like a good use of our money. It does cost quite a bit, but that lets us get the dual lasers online so we can actually directly fire at enemies now, which is probably good. Let's jump over here and see what else we can find. What's all this about? Oh. When we ask a nearby station for aid, a friendly programmer gives us schematics for an ion intruder drone. And nine scrap. I'll take it. Thank you. There's a store over there. Let's go over this way, though. I want to look around a little bit more before we just leave. We receive a distress call from a nearby NG ship. Assistance requested. Danger present. Imminent destruction. Sure, let's respond to the call and move in to assist. We approach to find a Mantis ship assaulting a small NG space station and prepare for a fight. These guys actually can't hurt us. Alright, well there's no reason for us to waste drone parts then. Let's just hit them with the ion stunner and the shields and then dual laser them. That should work out quite nicely. They can harass our shield crew quite badly, but they can't actually do anything to us, so I'm not too worried. Just knock out their helm so they can't run. We'll ion stunner them in the shields again. Then we'll hit them in the shields maybe so we can lock them down in stunner town. We only have one stunner in there, which isn't a super amount of stunning, but it'll be more annoying than nothing. So let's hit them with the ion stunner there and see if that'll let us wipe him up pretty easily. In fact, it definitely will, because they only have four hull left, and they're taking a ton of damage, so that's fine by me. Might as well auto-fire that thing. Don't need to keep clicking the button myself. And last, dual laser into the helm to make sure they're dead. Goodbye, Mantis Interceptor. You tried. That's one thing can be said for you, at least. The Mantis ship breaks apart, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 18 scrap, and when we contact the NG, oh, they thank us for the assistance, and when we tell them of our mission, one of the NG asks if they can assist our crew. We welcome them aboard, getting one fuel, two missiles, ten scrap, and another NG crew. Awesome. Welcome aboard, Rek. Get out of there. Also, we need to rename you. So, we have uh, Decagon, Hexagon, Octagon, Pentagon, and Rebecca. So, Rebecca, you're going to be renamed to Nonagon, which I believe is the uh, regular polygon that has nine sides. So, we'll probably look that up at the end of the episode. Either way, we'll keep moving. We have 43 scrap to spend again, but I think I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit longer, maybe, in case there's a store nearby I want to buy something at. There's one over there. Let's, uh, let's jump and see what happens. What do we have here? Ooh. The NG are awaiting us at the beacon with their weapons online. They explain a computer virus that is wanted for hostile acts against the NG, multiple counts of binary scrambling, nano dissolution, and variable interference, is aboard our vessel. Hmm, doesn't sound good. They insist they must destroy our ship to prevent the virus from escaping. Well, we can try and purge the system code or attack the vessel, but that seems kind of silly because we have three blue options. We can talk to our Lanius crew member who's frantically gesturing, we can have our NG crew member negotiate with the NGs, or we can isolate and quarantine the virus, all of which sound good. This is an NG system though, so normally having NGs for NG things is a good thing, so let's have our NG crew member negotiate with the NG ship and see what happens. Oh. We just got you! As the NG attempts to contact the vessel and negotiate, our NG crew member suddenly dissolves into nanites. The virus has murdered again. Detecting activity on board our ship, the NG vessel opens fire. Well, that was not exactly as good as I was hoping for. The virus appears to have disrupted our clone base capability to revive the lost crew member. You jerk. Alright, well, sorry Nonagon, you were a welcome crew member while you lasted. These guys can't hurt us either, so I guess we just smashed them for murdering our crew like that. Hang on, they're an NG hacker. Did they set the virus on us? <laughs> a jerk move if they did. Alright, let's smack them around and see if they'll go away. They probably have just nothing but NG crew, and probably repair bots too. They didn't see anything move from here. I guess that's all their drones. So, this is not going to go too well for us, but we might as well just smash them in the face until they stop moving. They have a clone bay, so it's not going to kill them. It's just going to be annoying. But that's fine by me. Alright, and let's hit the shields. I'll give them something else to think about. There you go, crew, go repair something other than the helm. Ion stunner in the shields. Looks like there's a bunch of people in there now. We keep ion stunnering them too, and they won't be able to do anything. So let's hit them, and they're on fire. Ooh, very nice. They have one hull left. Let's see if maybe they burn to death. I'd be very surprised with three NG, which is what I expect is in there. Although stunning them might make it really hard to put out the fires. Hmm. They have a clone bay though, so it's not like we can kill them, kill the crew anyway. All right, NG hacker, you're out of here. You killed Monogon, but at least you're dead. With the ship destroyed, we scrap it and prepare to jump away, getting two fuel, one drone part, and seven scrap. Oh. 
To our surprise, our NG crew member reforms. It looks as if the virus reconstituted, repurposed, and reprogrammed the NG host and wants to travel with us. And it seems to have learned a great deal from his time on our ship. Huh. It's got maximum engines and helm? Oh, let's get you out of that room. Do you have, ma do you have maximum everything? Maximum everything. Wow. That's unusual. <laughs> Especially, that's really powerful this early in the game. Holy cow. We can get 10% more evasion if we put them in piloting or engines. We can get a 20% faster weapons charge already, which doesn't make a difference with these weapons, really. Or we can get a 30% uh, faster shield, which is a big deal this early in the game, because you really, really cannot get shield skill that quickly. I'm going to rename you Nonagon again. Welcome back on board. And I think you're going to take over shields, because that's actually really powerful for shield regeneration speed. Alright, let's get you in there, and with 50 fuel, that's actually awesome. Okay, that's that's a pretty cool event. I wonder what those other events do, though. Like, what happens if you choose hacking, or if you choose Lanius, because that NG thing was really good. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, let's keep moving here. Probably want to put some money into our uh, evasion. Oh, there's another store right there. Maybe I'll hold on to the money then for a little bit longer. I'm sure we can get some good out of that store. And we've jumped into a Pulsar, oh boy. Sensors go wild as a nearby pulsar is detected. While we're attempting to recalibrate the FTL drive, a pirate sneaks up on our ship, weapons charging. Here goes nothing. Alright, well, we're gonna lose shields in a second. They have a missile launcher, which is the most dangerous thing on board there by far, so we're gonna hack out that system to try and prevent them from hitting us with, hitting us with it immediately. There we go. Activate the hack. Here comes the stun. We missed them anyway. Alright, please don't knock our weapons offline. Perfect. Dual laser them in the weapons. Perfect. Okay, now they can't hurt us. That hack was exactly what we needed as it happens. That made sure they could not fire it at us even once. And we're going to knock out their helm again. Oh, weapons are back online for them. That's not good news. All right, we need to hit the weapons in a hurry. Might actually stunner that thing. Ion stunner, go. Please knock that weapon offline. Oh, they got it. Ooh. They got the other weapon repaired just in time. And they got one shot off. Dang it. They're trying to power up their FTL drive to run away. Please miss us. Nope. Hit the hacking. Of course they did. All right. Well, we're just going to try and knock them down here because we should be able to kill them pretty easily as long as we can get our shot in here. There we go. Dual lasers into the helm should kill them as long as they don't knock out our weapons with this hack. There we go. They're dead. Perfect. And by hack, I meant pulsar wave, but that's fine. Ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 17 scrap, which we'll definitely take. Repair the hacking system there. Once we get our shields and our helm back up, we'll try and leave. If we can get our shields and our helm back up. Alright, let's just leave. Let's jump over here, I think. Then we'll go to the store and then we'll work our way to the exit, probably. We have a lot of time left. I think I probably could have jumped a couple more times. Maybe if we... Hmm. How do we want to do this? We have a whole bunch of jumps left. We could probably go one, two, three, four, five jumps. Which would be like one, two, three, four, five, maybe? I don't know if I can make that jump. Hmm. It'd be cool if we could, though. Let's jump over here and see what happens. Alright, they've tried to pulsar us, but they just missed, thankfully. And, why do you know, an abandoned space station circles a lonely planet. A quick check guild schematics for combat drone mark 1 and what, 8 scrap. Okay, that's good stuff. There's a pair of distress beacons over there and a store right here. I don't know if we can make that jump, but I'm going to give it a shot. If we can't go back to the store, that'd be annoying, but it won't be the end of the world. Let's jump over here and see what happens. We arrive at a smoldering NG research station. It's just just call unanswered. Attacked by Pyrus or Mantis, most likely. There may be someone left alive or something else of value on board. Let's board the station and find out. The away team reports a wounded NG in a functioning drone schematic. Then someone yells. The station reactor is overloading and they're running out of time. Well, we could save another NG, but we don't really need five NGs. I have a feeling that's a bit overkill. Plus, we kind of need to use our remaining three crew slots to get, like, Mantis or Rockman or something else that can actually fight a little bit better, because border is going to be a big problem for us right now. Let's save, save the drone schematic and see if we can get some money out of it. The NG don't feel things the same way other species do. They don't want the tech to be saved. Our crew returns safely to the airlock with a drone control and put some distance on the station before it blows, getting us 10 scrap and an anti-combat drone. I will take it. And we can make it back to the store. That's perfect. We're still going to lose a couple jumps here, I think, but not much we can do about that. Let's jump over here and see what we find. All right. A message arrives. Your scrap, ours, our weapons for you. We're about to raise a shield and realize it's just an NG trader looking for a trade. What do you have? A heavy laser, a firebomb, and a bunch of drones. Hmm, those drones aren't super great. Defense drones are good, but... Hmm. Hmm, this isn't actually a very great store for us. We're going to sell the Ion Intruder because I don't find it's very reliable. We're going to sell the Anti-Drone as well, I think. 
And we're going to hold on to the rest of our gear, as far as I can tell. A heavy laser is not bad, but it doesn't really pair well with anything we have. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a problem very quickly, I think. We really don't have a good weapon for the next stage. We don't have any crew we can use a teleporter with. The backup battery doesn't help us a whole lot. Mind control could be fun, but I think I kind of need to save up to buy a better weapon. If we don't have some more firepower in the next stage, we're going to get beat up pretty hard. So... Let's keep going, I guess. Let's go Distress Beacon. We might even go Store, Distress Beacon, Exit. Yeah, I don't think I can go that many jumps without getting overrun, but we might try it anyway, just to see if we can get something else we can fight with. We arrive at this beacon and immediately take the pirate ship. It seems this was a trap. Thankfully for us, it was also irrelevant. We have 134 scrap to spend, so there's definitely a lot of stuff we could buy, but if we can't find somewhere to spend that money soon, we're going to be in trouble, because we're kind of underpowered right now. And let's just do a laser in there to get that shield down quicker. And we did not actually hit them, which is annoying. Thankfully, they really cannot hurt us. There's nothing they can do. They're going to keep stunning Nonagon, but that doesn't actually make much of a difference. I wonder, if your crew are stunned, does that prevent the system from regenerating? I don't think so. It's probably just the ionization that does that, but that would be interesting if it did. Let's try and hit them in the helm so they can't go anywhere. Well, they didn't do enough damage, but that's fine. Now we should be able to hit them in the helm and prevent them from going anywhere. So, dual lasers, go. And both shots missed, what do you know? Alright, one of these days we'll get in there. And they're certainly not getting any closer to us, so let's just fire some more shots off. There we go, now they have no helm, perfect. So, now they can't dodge us, which is good news. We're going to go for the engines to make sure they still can't... Oh, they're, they're repairing quickly, they must have an NG or something else in there. One hit in the engines. If they try and run away, this is going to suck. I'm going to have to activate the beam drone instead of just relying on our damage. They try and surrender, offering us one fuel, two missiles, and eight scrap. We don't accept their surrender. We're going to try and murder them utterly. Ion Stunner goes in. We're going to hit them in the helm. Looks like we set them on fire in the engines. So they're not going anywhere anytime soon. And one more shot from the dual lasers should take them out for good. Which is ideal. And let's hit them in the uh, cloning bags. Why not? Goodbye, pirate instigator. Nice try. Ship explodes, giving us one missile, one drone part, and 13 scrap. We'll take it. We have 147 now. We can't actually make that jump anyway. All right, exit beacon it is, I guess. Time to get out of here before we get overrun. We arrive at a long-range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. And here, we've jumped to the aftermath of what seems to have been a brutal exchange between several ships. Wreckage drifts by our screens, and we can still see the remains of dying ships sparking and breaking apart. It's hard to determine who the combatants were without closer investigation. Well, let's investigate the battlefield. I think you can get extra crew this way. But... We scan the battlefield and find few remains. Disappointed, we prepare to jump onwards. Okay, well, that sucks. There's nothing actually there. But we can jump onto the next sector, and that's better than nothing. Sector 3 it is. We have Zoltan Homeworlds or the Civilian Sector. Well, Zoltan Homeworlds is better than a Civilian Sector, so let's go check that out. We have a bunch of NG crew, too, so that might be worth something. We've entered Zoltan territory. While this species is not renowned for giving anything for nothing, we can allegedly always be assured a fair hearing. <laughs> Either way... That is the end of this episode, which is good, because my voice is starting to get tired, in case you can't tell. I don't know how it's uh, coming across in the video, but uh, I'm doing my best. Either way, we're going to end this episode here for now. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing with the NG Cruiser Type-C here, the VSS Polygon, and her faithful crew, Decagon, Hexagon, Octagon, Pentagon, and Nonagon Mark II. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Until then, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.